We think that the risks for the new swine flu vaccine are going to be quite similar to those of the vaccine that we currently recommend for children on an annual basis. However, we are just starting the clinical trials through the NIH that will confirm that. We should have that information in the next couple of months. You mentioned the normal risks mm -hmm. of the regular flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. What are those normal risks? Mm -hmm. For the vaccine that you get as a shot in the arm, uh, sometimes it's possible to have a little bit of redness or tenderness at the injection site in the first day or so following immunization. And sometimes um, both children or adults actually can develop a little bit of a fever with that. Those would probably be the most common reactions. And so there's a thought that those common reactions could possibly uh, exist in the new vaccine. Yes, and that's because the vaccine that will be available certainly initially is going to be made using exactly the same kind of manufacturing process that is used for the regular seasonal vaccine. And so we think that this is really going to be a simple strain change um, and that these side effects will be very similar. Um, so should I wait until mass uh, vaccinations available at my children's school or vaccinate them as soon as possible? Well, the plans for how the vaccine will be distributed are still being developed. Uh, it is fair to say at this point that the states are really going to be in control of how that happens at the state level. The ways that, or the places that the vaccine will be distributed to include both private providers, clinics, uh, and perhaps uh, there will be school-based immunization programs that will be happening here locally. But we don't know that currently for the state of California in this area. It's probably a good idea then for parents to just keep in touch with their health care providers for their children to find out when vaccine is available and what the best place to go is to f get their children immunized. And will there be enough vaccine? Well, initially there will not be enough for everyone in this country. Uh, for that reason, the ACIP, which is a committee of the CDC, recommended at the end of June a list of priority groups for vaccination. Um, pregnant women are very high priority, and so are children certainly who are six months and older. Um, caregivers, parents, family members of children who are less than six months of age because those very young children probably won't be able to be immunized are also an important group to be considered there. And lastly, of course, the healthcare providers are in that first group of priorities so that we can make sure that we're not bringing uh, virus from the community into the hospital and potentially infecting patients that we're seeing here. So would social distancing help uh, with regards to kids in school and catching H1N1? Well, because uh, we know that kids are back in school now and vaccination is not going to be happening until at least a month or so from now, um, it is important that the schools in particular maintain some ideas about keeping kids a little bit more separated if influenza is spreading within the school. We learned a lot from the experience during the spring, and so I expect that we will see far fewer school closures, although that still might be something that's necessary. But if there is a school where there's a particularly high incidence of infection, we might see that that's still important. More important, however, I think is the um, pr simple hygiene measures that we've all grown up with and that I think parents and teachers can be reinforcing with children to cover sneezes, cover coughs, to wash your hands frequently, to use uh, gel sanitizers. Those things can be easily done within the schools and should be happening until a majority of the children at least are immunized. Excellent. And finally, what underlying conditions in children can make swine flu worse? Uh, it's important to understand that this swine flu is really different than our usual flu because it really does target younger people. Uh, in a very recent report from CDC, the median age of children who, or anyone who had infection was actually 12 years. And the median age of hospitalized children was really only 20 years of age. So while we've become used to influenza being a disease of older individuals and very young babies, this flu is different in that it really is targeting young children. From that standpoint then, um, the underlying conditions in the children who have been reported to have H1 infection include respiratory illnesses, asthma 
being noted in particular. It's also important though to remember that half of the children that did come down with H1N1 infection and were reported had no underlying conditions and so otherwise were previously healthy.